Hello, I'm Phoebe from Little Angel Theatre and today I'm going to be reading the story of the little matchstick girl. It was so terribly cold. Snow was falling and it was almost dark. Evening came on, the last evening of the year. In the cold and gloom, a poor little girl, bareheaded and barefooted, was walking through the streets. Of course, when she'd left her house, she had slippers on. They were very big slippers, far too big for her, for they belonged to her mother. The little girl had lost them running across the road, where two carriages had rattled by terribly fast. One slipper she'd not been able to find again, and a boy had run off with the other, saying he could use it very well as a cradle some day when he had children of his own. And so the little girl walked on her naked feet, which were quite red and blue with the cold. In an apron, she carried several packages of matches and she held a box of them in her hand. No one had brought any from her all day long and she hadn't earned a penny. Shivering with cold and hunger, she crept along. The snowflakes fell on her long fair hair, which hung in pretty curls over her neck. In all the windows, lights were shining, and there was a wonderful smell of roast goose, for it was New Year's Eve. In a corner, formed by two houses, she sat down and drew up her little feet under her. She was getting colder and colder, but did not dare to go home, for she had sold no matches, nor earned a single penny, and her father would surely beat her. Besides, it was cold at home, for they had nothing over them but a roof, through which the wind whistled even through the biggest cracks, and they'd been stuffed with straw and rags. Her hands were almost dead with cold. Oh, how much one little match might warm her. If she could only take one from the box and rub it against the wall and warm her hands. She drew one out. Ratch! How it spluttered and burned. It made a warm, bright flame like a little candle but it gave a strange light. It really seemed to the little girl as if she were sitting before a great iron stove with shining brass knobs and a brass cover. How wonderfully the fire burned. How comfortable it was. The youngster stretched out her feet to warm them too. And then the flame went out and the stove vanished, and she had only the remains of the burnt match in her hand. She struck another match against the wall. It burned brightly, and when the light fell upon the wall, it became transparent, like a thin veil, and she could see through it into a room. On the table, a snow-white cloth was spread, and on it stood a shining dinner service. The roast goose seemed gloriously, stuffed with apples and prunes. And what was still better, the goose jumped down from the dish and waddled along the floor with a knife and fork in its breast, right over to the little girl. And then the match went out and she could see only the thick, cold wall. She lighted another match. Now, she was sitting under the most beautiful Christmas tree. It was much larger and much more beautiful than the one she'd seen last Christmas through the glass door at the merchant's home. Thousands of candles burned on the green branches and coloured pictures 
like those in the print shops, looked down at her. The little girl reached both her hands towards them. But then the match went out. But this time, the Christmas lights mounted higher. She saw them now as bright stars in the sky. One of them fell down, forming a long line of fire. Now someone is dying, thought the little girl. For her grandmother, the only person who had ever loved her and who was now dead, had told her that when a star fell down, a soul went up into the sky. She rubbed another match against the wall. It became brighter again, and in the glow, the old grandmother stood clear and shining, kind and lovely. Grandmother, cried the child, oh, take me with you. I know you will disappear when the match is burnt out. You will vanish like the warm stove and the wonderful roast goose and the big, beautiful Christmas tree. And she quickly struck the whole bundle of matches, for she wished to keep her grandmother with her. And the matches burned with such a glow that it became brighter than daylight. Grandmother had never been so grand and beautiful. She took the little girl in her arms and both of them flew in the brightness and joy above the earth very, very high, and up there was neither cold, nor hunger, nor fear. But in the corner, leaning against the wall, sat the little girl with red cheeks and smiling mouth, frozen to death on the last evening of the old year. The New Year's sun rose up upon the little figure. The child sat there, stiff and cold, holding the matches, of which one bundle was almost burned. She wanted to warm herself, the people said. No one imagined what beautiful things she had seen and how happily she had gone with her old grandmother into the bright, New Year. The End.